I don't host actually, I just host my Daryl over there hosts a night like this, not, to be honest, not quite as lively as this one, this is brilliant, um, in Guildford, which is a few miles southwest of London, within reach of London. Um, so I'm Janice Wendell. Uh, we call ourselves the Thousand Monkeys. If you go online and go www.thethousandmonkeys.com, that's us. Um, okay, I'd, I'd forgotten it was Halloween when we came over. We come over every few months and we try to time it so that we can take in this lovely venue. Um, I'd forgotten it was Halloween. Um, I'm going to tell you a, a story though. Um, I'll start by telling the story behind this very short poem. There is a very black lake in the north of England, in the Lake District, called Wast Water. It is the deepest piece of water inland in Britain. It has parts of it cannot be dived into. It's too deep. And it has a huge black mountain covered in scree that overlooks it. And the day I was taken there by a friend, it was extremely gloomy and very frightening. And he told me, yes, there are ghosts here. There have to be ghosts here because a lot of wives have died here. <laughs> um, at least two. <laughs> um, so this is the story of one of them. Um, this is the poem, and I'll tell you the story afterwards. You'd think you could walk on water to the frown and tumble of scree across the slaty iron mirror you tell me of the waxen face of the woman raised from where she rested in the deeps, teetering above the yawning pit dug by the ice. On a catacomb ledge, a mummy wrapped like a sultan's gift. She would never again entice a man. The one who'd rowed her there, Sharon, to Wastwater Styx, was later briefly consigned to hell. <laughs> he got a very short sentence. I remember the case. And he kept saying, yes, she's dead. Yes, I killed her. What they'd done was they'd spotted her wrapped in a carpet on this ledge. And when they raised her up, she still had her wedding ring on with his initials and hers inside it. And what's more, if he just rode an extra a couple of feet, she would have been in that chasm in the middle. So he might never have been caught. And he kept saying, no, I didn't murder her. She's dead. But I think he believed that she deserved it. It was that she was enticing everybody except himself. And uh, I'm afraid she paid for it. Um, the other poem I have which is about haunting is about being haunted as a child because children are extremely good at being haunted. And I was no different. Um, and when I was nine, I used to walk past a haunted house. And I was then a, a leader of sisters. We were like ducklings going along this road. And we had a way of getting past this house. Precautions, this is called. We knew and we did not know, believed and we did not believe, that nine hot steps, tapping, to the other side of the road would protect us. The roofless cottage watched with unglazed eye socket windows as I led my sisters by. One day, perhaps, we would become careless. Um, I'm also, on a, on a cheerful note, I've been writing my own epitaph. So it's quite simple actually. Epitaph. She lived, she died, she posed, she lied, exposed herself and told the truth, by turns matured, returned to youth, not a beggar, not a queen, her life a stew of might have been, her life a stew of might have been, she died as she was born, so weak. Between she told some lies, some truths, gave of herself and took as much. She never found the path that led to greatness, but she lived in hope. My youth remastered, remastered as the past, outdated, dead and buried, gone so fast. 
I've grown so weary. I understand at last. Lifeline. At ten, I thought I'd live forever. At forty, I thought I'd see a hundred anyway. At sixty, I thought I had another twenty years in me. At seventy, I thought I'd better live for today. At eighty, I began to live, only in each minute, as if I would live forever. Thank you. This is slightly more This one, this one is a, there's a very famous ancient map in Hereford in, in Britain, um, which is a map of the whole world as a medieval map. And the centre of it is Jerusalem. And it's it's a conceptual map. It's an amazing thing. It's it's made on a one whole calf skin. So this is called Mappa Mundi, Map of the World. Draw our Mappa Mundi on my pelt, with our joined hearts at the centre. On radiating contours, inscribe the cities we've made holy to ourselves. Record in gilded script thoughts and jokes we've shared, and paint in turquoise the seas we've crossed together on voyage of discovery. On the quadrants will be iconic portraits of the friends we've made together. This is a temporal map. A vanishing point puts in perspective the years that we have left. But while there is still uncharted vellum, we'll map our own mythology with our own Jerusalem at the centre. Thank you.